Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today we've got a long-term review of the Garmin Forerunner 745. It's the thing chilling on my wrist right here. In fact, it's been on my wrist for just shy of six months at this point. And by six months, I actually mean eight months because it's been about two months since I started filming and got around to editing it, so eight months later, Forerunner 745 review. So this video is a bit of like a two-part review, if you will. I'm going to explain first off just quickly some of the new features of the 745 compared to the past. Then I'm going to explain what's new in the last six months of the 745. And then I'm going to explain how it differs from the 945. And then finally, I'm going to explain why this thing is still on my wrist six months later, even though I have plenty of other watches I can choose from here that are more powerful watches or fancier watches or higher end watches or whatever the case is. Now, if you want to switch between all of the different chunks there, you can see the YouTube chapters thing along the bottom, on the side or somewhere that allows you to kind of skip ahead to which chapter is most applicable to you. First up though, is all the newness of the 745 compared to the past. And so these are things that were not there on the 735 before it, but as you might know, if you kind of follow Garmin watches, there was really almost nothing new on the 745 except track mode. That's a mode where you went out on a running track, you ran around a couple of times, it calibrated to the track, and then it made these absolutely perfect GPS tracks on the running track. And I love it. I was just out running the track a couple of days ago and it makes just beautiful tracks every single time. It's, it's a great thing. But now that feature is offered on the 4945, it's on the Phoenix 6, it's on the 245, it's on lots of different watches. So there's plenty of options out there that are not just the 745 itself. Still, stepping back though to what was new from the 745 compared to the 735 prior to that really quickly, uh, one, they added music, so that includes things like Spotify offlining as well as Amazon Music offlining. Two, they added the daily suggested workouts, so it basically tells you each time you go into sport mode what you should do for that particular day just to kind of keep you moving along. So it could say do an hour and a half of base today at a certain pace for running or do a certain wattage for cycling uh, for a given time period or given intervals. Uh, so lots of options there to kind of just keep you focused on moving that training forward. They then added Pace Pro and Climb Pro. Pace Pro is basically where you set a target goal for a given race and then it loads that course into it and it figures out kind of how to race that particular race. If you wanted like negative split, for example, go faster on uphills or downhills. It's a pretty cool thing if you're racing right now. Yeah, not so much on the racing scene. So it's not really as useful. Whereas Climb Pro is still useful despite a lack of races. Uh, so in the case of Climb Pro, what it basically does is takes a longer climb. So say for example, you go hike to the top of a mountain or run to the top of a mountain, whatever you want to do. In most cases, that's not just one continuous climb. In most cases, you're going to have like a set of different climbs. So you may have, you know, the first climb a couple kilometers, and then you go down a little bit and you go back up again. And it basically segments each one of those climbs and tells you the distance to the top uh, remaining, your incline, like it's super useful. It's one of my favorite features uh, on a Garmin watch. And so they have that here on the 745 versus in the past, it's only been on their higher end watches. They also added contactless payments. So you got to tap it and pay for a whatever you want to pay for, Starbucks or something. I don't know. Whatever you want to pay for, you can do that now just by loading your card onto your watch itself, assuming your bank supports it. In the US, no real problems there. Uh, in like the UK, it's not so hot. Here in the Netherlands, kind of a mixed bag. They then added full training load stats, which is a feature we're going to talk about in more depth later on. Uh, and they also add a bunch of 24 by 7 metrics uh, that kind of extend beyond like typical sleep and stuff like that. So uh, you've got stress tracking now, there's heat and altitude acclimation, which kind of fall more under training load metrics, but it's just a different bucket there. Point being that if you're going somewhere hot, it'll tell you how acclimated to that you are. If you're going somewhere that's high altitude, it'll do the same for altitude as well. And then the two biggies, they also added a barometric altimeter as well as support for running power because it now has a barometric altimeter, assuming that you've got the right Garmin accessories, which is primarily a Garmin HRM tri strap, HRM run strap, HRM pro strap, or the RD pod. Or you could just skip all that and buy like a stride or something like that sensor, and it works with that too. Now, in my full in depth review from way back in whenever, um, I dive into a lot of that stuff. So check out that video up in the corner there, or you can see my written review where I dive even more detailed to the other other dozen plus features that are new that are just kind of too nuanced to mention right here. So since it's released, what has changed in the 745? And it's really just a couple of things. Number one, they added cross-country ski power, uh, and that's with the HRM Pro strap in particular. And that was a feature they added about a month or so ago now across a number of the high-end Garmin watches. Uh, so if you've got snow, 
in cross-country skis. You can now get the equivalent of running power for cross-country skiing. Again, if you have the HRM Pro strap. They added some Climb Pro notifications, so just kind of a little minor feature add there. Then they also added descent notifications for Climb Pro as well. So previously, Climb Pro across all of Garmin's devices was really about tracking going uphill, not so much downhill. Uh, and now you can do the downhill notifications or downhill tracking as well. But that's only for non-cycling sports, not for any like cycling modes. Now, one feature you won't find in there that was like taken away kind of um, is advanced sleep tracking. It's something that they showed at launch uh, and said it was coming very, very soon, but here we are six months later and it's not there today. Uh, and the reason for that is a lot of pain and suffering at Garmin. Basically they went into it, they thought they had this figured out, and it didn't really work the way they wanted to. The algorithms came from First Beat, uh, versus in the past, all the sleep tracking that happened on Garmin devices was their own algorithms. They bought First Beat, the company, uh, about a year ago, I guess now, uh, and they pulled in those algorithms, and they brought them onto the Phoenix 6 series, for example. You'll see them there. I believe they're also in beta on the 4Runner 945 too. And they worked great for a lot of people, but apparently not all people. And so Garmin basically like paused the rollout there, and they said, wait, we're gonna wait on this, uh, and it hasn't yet come to the 745. I checked with Garmin on that just last week to find out if it's ever going to come to the 745. Uh, and they said, yes, absolutely, it is definitely coming to the 745. Uh, they didn't have exact timing, though, but they said they believe they're kind of beyond the hill of the problems that they were facing. Uh, so hopefully that'll be here relatively shortly. Meanwhile, you should go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there because it really does help this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, let's talk about what's different between the 945 and the 745. Uh, and there's a couple big ticket items. One, and the biggest ticket item, is there's no offline mapping on the 745. So there's no pretty maps. You can do breadcrumb trails and routing and all that kind of stuff, as long as you got the course predefined, but you can't actually see like topo maps and stuff like that on the 745. So that's a big thing for a lot of people, and I'll explain why that does or doesn't impact me in just a moment. Next, the 945 has longer battery life than the 745. It's as simple as that. Uh, the 745 tops out around 20 hours of usable battery life for GPS mode uh, versus the 945 is on the screen right there, the different specs depending on which mode you're in. The 945 has more storage because of the fact that it has the mapping in it. So uh, it's got 14 gigs of storage on the 945 with about eight gigabytes of that usable after the maps are pre-installed. Meanwhile, the 745 has four gigs of storage with about three of that usable, and that's primarily to be used for your music as well as the very small amount needed to record the actual activities themselves. The 945 is slightly heavier at 50 grams than the 47 gram 745. Uh, the 945 has golf, the 745 doesn't. Uh, the 945 has the first beat respiration rate during a workout. Um, both the 745 and the 945 have respiration rate at rest. So if you're using that to potentially track for illness or whatnot, you can still do that. But the 945 will also track that using the optical sensor during the workout versus the 745 will not. You're never gonna use that, just so you know. And lastly, the 945 has a bunch of random widgets that you're also probably never gonna use. Uh, that includes the temperature widget, compass widget, dog track widget, alternate time zone widget, zero bow sight widget. Uh, the 745 does have a compass, but not a dedicated compass widget outside of activities. You might use some of those, but I've never really used almost any of them at this point. But here is the biggie, price. So officially on paper, the 945 is supposed to be 599 bucks and the 745 is 499 bucks. So hundred dollar difference. So at that point, you're basically saying, do I wanna spend hundred bucks for maps and more battery? In a nutshell, it's kind of the, the core thing there. But in reality, the 945 has been floating down lower and lower. On Amazon right now, as of today, it's at 530 bucks, so $30 more than the 745, but it's also gone down as low as 499, so it's the same price. Now, in the US, Garmin restricts pricing on all their products. It's called MAP, Minimum Advertised Pricing, uh, or technically Minimum Advertised Pricing Policy. Uh, and what that means is they can dictate what the retailers can set their prices for. So that's why we haven't seen the 745 drop in price at all. It's been static at that same price point. The 945 is also under that same policy, but companies can buy enough stock that they can ignore the policy and ignore the punishments. That's why we see Amazon lower than they are, because they've bought probably tens of thousands of units, and they take the six-month ban and don't worry about it in order to give you a cheaper price. That ban is per offending product, by the way, so it doesn't actually impact the rest of the products. GoPro and other retailers all do the same thing. It's a U.S. thing that doesn't exist in the rest of the world and is considered highly legal everywhere else. Now, the point of this whole like ramble here is the fact that right now, the 745 and the 945 are almost basically a wash price-wise. But eventually, I suspect we'll see the 745 price drop. Probably not this month or next month or anytime soon, really, but we'll eventually see it go on sale, probably drop down to something like 399, and that's where it becomes super compelling. And that's where you might be finding yourself watching this very video going, which one do I get? 
And we'll get back to that in just a second. First, I'm gonna briefly talk about accuracy. And here's the thing, it's fine. Like if you know me, you've watched my videos, you know I harp a lot on accuracy and talk a lot about accuracy. And I have accuracy eyes the crap out of this watch over the last six months and every single other review of every single product. And you can see all my data from probably hundreds of workouts at this point um, on this to see how well it is. And by and large, GPS is really darn good and optical heart rate is really darn good. Uh, there are certainly cases where they're not perfect. Uh, just two days ago, I was doing a workout, um, interval workout and the 745 on two of the intervals had like some weird lower heart rate stuff that wasn't accurate. But that was actually pretty rare for me. I've done tons of interval workouts with this and it's been spot on using the optical heart rate sensor. Uh, so that was just a bit of a one-off. Still, if you want more accuracy data, you can see uh, my full in-depth review linked up below. There's like a month worth of data there. Or you can look at literally any other review I've released in the last six months and see 745 data in those sets as well. So at this point, you're probably asking yourself, why are you still wearing this watch? Why are you wearing this watch when the 945 has more features and all that kind of stuff and it's effectively the same price? For that, I need to bring my trusty block over here, get that set up, take my watch off, and I'll show you exactly why. And it's this watch face right here. This is the stock watch face on the 745. And it's one metric at the very bottom, seven day load. And that's something that I'm really finding actually fairly useful. In no other Garmin watch, actually has this watch face uh, or the ability to put your seven day load on it. Uh, and so the seven day load is your training load. And it's something that, you know, right now where I don't have any set races I'm focused on, I'm just using this as kind of like a barometer for how much I'm training each day. I'm using the training load metrics to see, am I in the right zone? Am I doing too much or too little? And this is like the simple gut check. Every time I look at my wrist and go, yeah, I'm doing where I wanna be this week. And once I go down into the widgets, this is the exact same with every other Garmin watch like 945 and Phoenix 6 and stuff like that. Uh, it's just that watch face that's different. So I go into here, I see my training status, it's maintaining. I go down, I can see my fitness and load, relatively static. Uh, and I can see what I've been doing this last week. Uh, you can see today my run, yesterday I didn't do much of anything. Tuesday, Monday, my runs and rides. Uh, Sunday, or sorry, yeah, Sunday not much, Saturday workout, and nothing on Friday. So it's just a very simple way to look at that, uh, and it will give me recommendations for what I should be doing or not doing. Uh, and again, this is the same, you can see my breakdown of my training load. Again, this is the same on the, the Phoenix 6 as in the 945, uh, but it's back here, this simple watch face is a core reason why I like this. And so I reached out to Garmin and I said, is this really only available on the 745? And I said, Actually, yeah, uh, and the reason is that for every new watch they release, they try to have one like new watch face that's unique to that particular watch. And in this case, it just happened to be this one. Uh, but they did agree that it made sense, would make sense anyways, to go ahead and offer the training load on other watches or watch faces as well. So they're looking at doing that, no like promises or anything like that on a win or whatever, but they do agree it kind of makes sense to offer that on the Phoenix 6 or the 945 or whatever the case may be. Okay, so that's piece number one. Piece number two, well, like anyone else, I've got preferences on what I like to wear like fashion-wise. And while I'm not really sure this qualifies as fashion, I just like the color. Uh, it, it's like this reddish color with a little hint of orange in it. I think it's technically called like magma or lava or some fancy term like that, uh, but it just works. I mean, you can see a mother wrist here. I've got an Apple Watch SE also in a reddish color. It's just what I happen to prefer. I don't have to worry about walking into a boardroom or anything like that right now. So I don't need like a fancy watch. I just this works just fine for me. And then the last reason I kind of prefer is it's just a slight bit smaller than the 945. If you follow me a long time, you know I prefer smaller watches in general. Sure, I'll wear the big watches for a long time period for reviews and stuff like that, but when push comes to shove, when all is said and done, I just prefer a slightly smaller, lighter watch. Uh, and this is slightly smaller and lighter than the 945, in particular the bezels. The 945 bezels are a lot bigger around the edge compared to the 745, uh, and that's something that I just like the look of this a little bit better. Now the downside, of course, compared to the 945, the big downside for most people is the lack of maps. But here's the thing, I'm not going anywhere right now. Like everyone else, we're all kind of stuck at home. And when I'm riding, I'm using a cycling GPS with dedicated maps on that. So I don't really need maps for my wrists. Now, of course, eventually I'll be able to go out to the mountains again and all that kind of stuff. And in that case, I do really like having maps on my wrist. I think they're super valuable when I'm in the Alps or wherever to be able to go up to a trail junction with six different trails or four different trails, all going from the same spot and figuring out using the maps, which is the correct trail. Something that's a little bit harder to do with just breadcrumb trails on a watch like this. But for now, this works just fine for me. And you know, you might be a point right now, you look at this and go, why would I buy the 745 over the 945? And yes, for $30 or less, 
less difference, it doesn't make technical sense or feature sense to buy the 745 over the 945. Like, I don't disagree at all there. Um, but for what I want, though, which is this darn watch face, this particular color, and a slightly smaller size, that's kind of what I want. Like, I can't really argue with that, and no one else can, because that's sort of my feature priority, if you will, um, over some of those other features. So, as always, you make your own choices on what watches you want to wear based on what features you want. There are features that may not all be important to you versus other ones that are, and that's kind of the cool part about having so many options in the marketplace from so many different companies, uh, or even from one company, uh, to be able to choose what fits you the best. With that, hope you found this long-term review interesting or useful, whatever the case may be. If so, simply whack that like button down the bottom there, or the subscribe button, because there's plenty more sports technology goodness coming, especially in the next couple weeks. You won't want to miss anything. With that, have a good one.